Hey, so I'm studying for a system design interview and I thought it would be interesting, uh, mostly for my own accountability, to kind of walk through this. This is from the System Design Primer, uh, which I'll link in the description below. Uh, but we'll walk through how they explain how they would design pastebin.com or a bit.ly. And so really, I don't expect a lot of people to watch this video. This is more of like me talking through it uh, to hold myself accountable and get some practice in. So cool, let's do it. Um, let's come out. Eh, that's probably better. Okay, cool. So step one of any approach for a system design based on uh, the framework proposed by this uh, study guide is to outline the use cases and constraints. So, you know, I guess I'm trying to think about how we would budget this. Like, let's say we have a 45 minute interview. Uh, maybe the first 10 minutes are gathering requirements and scoping the problem. And the goal with the questions should be to clarify use cases and constraints and discuss any uh, assumptions. So because there's no interview in, in this situation, they're going to define some for us. So here are the use cases we need to handle. A uh, user enters a block of text and gets a randomly generated string link, uh, which we could even pull this up to see. Right, so if I said, hello world, uh, create new paste. Great, so I've got, that's basically how it would work, right? I have this, this randomly generated link. Uh, expiration does not expire. Uh, I don't think it expires by default, so that's good. Uh, you can opt optionally set an expired expiration. Right, so that would be here, burn after read, 10 minutes, yada, yada. That's actually cool, the burn after read. Okay, uh, user enters a paste URL and views the contents. So do the same thing. Cool. User is anonymous, right? I didn't have to log in or anything. Uh, the service tracks analytics of pages, monthly visit stats. How does it show that? Yeah, it does right here. Views. Let's see if I refresh. No. Okay, maybe it's unique views. That's fine. Um, service deletes expired paste. So let's try doing that. If I create one, say goodbye. And let's do burn after read. That's really cool. Once accessed, you can no longer view this paste. Okay, well hit show me the paste. Okay, so now let's refresh. No longer available, that is super cool. Okay, um, cool. High availability, we can just assume that. Okay, so out of scope, you just ser user registers for an account. We're not gonna design that. User verifies an email, nope. Logs in, nope. Edits the document, nope. Uh, set visibility. Um, I guess that would be like if you wanted to do, oh, private, okay, interesting. And then they can set the short link, right? Like I don't think I can edit it. Maybe you can if you're logged in. Okay, cool. Uh, constraints and assumptions. So traffic is not evenly distributed. What does that mean? Well, let's say we have two links. Uh, one is you know me sending something to my mom and the other is Justin Bieber uh, creating a, I don't know, like new lyrics for an upcoming song and sharing that, right? He'd get a lot more traffic. Following links should be fast, right? So the, uh, the uh, like the read API basically, um, when the client requests this URL from the API, it should respond very quickly. Um, so, you know, if we're looking this up in a database, it should be very quick. Uh, text only, no images or any other, I guess, type of format like video. Page view analytics do not need to be real time, right? So if, if I'm looking at the hello world and you are, it doesn't need to you know, have some sort of web sockets in the background to be real time. Um, on a new page refresh, we'll get that. 10 million users, uh, 10 million writes per month, and 100 million reads per month. Right, so the, there's more writers than readers, so we have a 10 to 1 read to write ratio. Uh, clarifying if you need back of the envelope usage. So I guess this is something to ask. Um, 
This is something that I'm not super comfortable with, but I guess I'll, I'll get more comfortable over time. So one kilobyte content per paste. Short link is seven bytes. Expiration length in minutes is four bytes. Created at is five bytes. Paste path. I'm trying to think what the difference is between the short link. Maybe that's, I guess the short link is this. And the paste path, I don't, I don't really know what that is. Maybe it's like what the actual, like, text is, maybe? I don't know. I guess so. We'll say that. Um, unless they're like storing it on disk and it's the path to the file. I'm not sure. Um, 12 gigabytes of new paste content per month, right? How do we get there? Well, 1.27 kilobytes times 10 million per month. So per month, we're going to be storing 12 gigabytes of data. Um, assuming 450 gigabytes in three years, right? If we needed to support this for like three years, it's 360 million short links in three years. Um, assume most new pace are instead of updating, right? Because you can't update an existing one. Four per second on average, 40 requests per second on average, right? So every second there's four being created. Uh, 2.5 million seconds per month. Oh, okay. There's one, one request per second equals 2.5 million requests per month. 40 requests per second equals 100 million requests per month. Okay, so they just kind of broke this down. 400 requests per second would be 1 billion requests per month. Okay. Cool. So step two. So we've done step one, outline the constraints, the use cases, the assumptions. Uh, now, step two, creating a high-level design, right? So kind of like basic, right? We have a client, uh, like a web application. We have a web server running somewhere. Um, and then we have these different APIs, right? Like these could be function, because these could be routes. This could be a Next or Node.js, Express.js server with two different handlers, like a, a route. And then in that handler, we're handling writes, the write API and the read API. Um, analytics, maybe that's like a separate service. Because um, basically, you know, like, I don't know, I guess if we're doing a bunch of like requests to the analytics service and it's on the same place as the web server, which controls like the read and write API, um, like we wouldn't want those to affect each other, right? So we're gonna we're gonna separate those so they're not coupled together. Um, uh, some sort of like SQL database, uh, an object store. I don't know. I'll need to research that one because I'm not 100 percent sure why that's there or what that does rather. Okay, so high level design. Now we talk about some, designing some of the core components, and then last we'll talk about scalability. Uh, so use case: a user enters a block of text and gets a randomly generated radiated link what happens so we can use a relational database as a large hash table mapping the generated URL to a file server okay so we're st storing them on a file server so I guess that's probably what the object store is and a path container right so we store it in the object server and then in the SQL table uh, like the actual value is the path to that file where it's like it's in this folder this path um, Instead of managing a file server, we could use a managed object store, such as S3 or a NoSQL store, right? And I think we want a NoSQL store because we are doing more reads than writes. And I'm guessing that's why. Let's see. Uh, an alternative to a relational database acting, we could use a NoSQL key value store. We should discuss the purchase. I need to review that definitely more. Uh, SQL versus NoSQL. Following discussion uses the relational database approach. So client sends a uh, create, so let's walk through an example, right? Uh, you're on the website, the client sends a create paste request to the web server, running as a reverse proxy. I don't know why that's important. Um, the web server forwards a request to the right API server. Uh, this right API server does the following. It generates a unique link. So it checks if it's unique by looking at the SQL database for a duplicate. If it's not ulink, it generates another URL. If we support, we don't support custom URLs, so we don't need to do anything like that. We save it to the SQL database table, like the paste table. 
we save the paste data to the object store and then we return the URL. And so that's, that's an example. Uh, so here we would ask like how much code they want me to write. The paste table could have the following structure. We have a short link, which is a char, um, seven characters. It's not null or can't be null. Expiration length in minutes. So an integer, not null, created at time, a date timestamp, not null. Paste path, var char. Um, I think that's a just like a string, but 255 bytes maybe. Uh, the primary key is the short link. Cool. Setting the primary key based on the short link column creates the index that the database uses to enforce uniqueness. That is important. Um, we'll create an additional index on created at to speed up lookups. Uh, so after this, log time instead of scanning the entire database. So this part's a little, this whole part is kind of a little fuzzy to me. Uh, reading one megabyte sequentially from memory takes about 20, 250 microseconds. I'm not sure if I'll need to use that this week, but we'll see in my interviews. Um, okay, to generate the unique URL, we could take the MD5 hash of the user's IP address plus timestamp. MD5 is a widely used hashing function that produces a 128-bit hash value. It's uniformly distributed. Alternatively, we could take the MD5 hash of randomly generated data. Or we could use base 62 in code, uh, which works well for URLs, eliminating the need for escaping as special characters. I'd probably go with that one because I think that will provide us with like uh, an easy short, short link to type in, depending on where this is being used. There's only one hash result for the original input, and base 62 is deterministic. Base 64 is another popular encoding, but provides issues for URLs because of the additional plus and forward slash. Uh, the base 62 pseudocode runs in O of K time, where K is the number of digits. So digits this, while num is great, remainder modulo. This looks like some Python. Or wait, no. Yeah, def, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so it's basically getting like seven digits. Take the first characters of the output, which results in 62 to the seventh possible values. It should be sufficient to handle our constraint of 360 million short links. Got it. Okay, so we need to make sure they're, whatever hashing algorithm we're using needs to be able to create upwards of 360 unique uh, values. So base, 60, base encode MD5 IP address plus stamp. Cool. We use a public REST API. Cool. Uh, the downs, the trade-offs of that, we're not, we don't, um, because we don't have a key and we're using this public API, we could be spammed, but I guess that's something that we're not going to be handling. Uh, the response would be like a short link. Um, cool. Use case, user enters a paste URL and views the contents. So we'll talk about two use cases, I guess. The client sends a get request to the web server. The web server forwards a request to the read API URL. The read API server checks the SQL database for the generated URL. If it's in the database, fetch the contents else return a message for, to the user. So paste contents, hello world, created at expiration. Okay, and then our last use case, service tracks the analytics of page. Since they're not a requirement, we could simply map reduce to the web server logs to generate hit counts. Okay, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool, so we got hit counts. Hit counts is this class. We got a, a couple different methods, extracting the URL, mapper, Okay, parse each log, reducer, sum the values for each key. Okay, so we're emitting these key pairs, right? The date, the URL, and the count. And then we use reducer to re sum those all up. Okay. Last, uh, service deletes expired paste. We could just scan the SQL database for all entries whose expiration tape are older, expiration timestamp are older than the current timestamp. All expired entries would be deleted or marked as expired if we want to keep the data. So yeah, we, we could basically have a like a cron job or something that runs to do that. Okay, and the last thing, uh, which we'll wrap up here, um, is to scale the design. 
right? So identify and address bottlenecks given the constraints. So we've got, oops, well, I guess this is fine. We'll zoom in. We got the client, uh, DNS, CDN. I need to read up more on DNS. Or I might use that CDN, right, if we need to cache. Um, we have a load balancer to handle which web server we'll talk to so we can scale horizontally. Uh, the web server is then kind of the interface between our different APIs, the write and the read API, uh, which could be different microservices, for example. Um, we have the analytics running kind of at a similar layer, but separately, not on the same machine, or not on the same server, I guess. Uh, we have memory cache um, so that we can read faster uh, without having to go all the way to the database. Um, we've got a SQL like master slave, uh, kind of approach, which I need to read up on, but basically you have these read replicas. You have one, maybe like master slave or master, I guess, um, which is where all the writes happen. And then the reading happens from a separate database. Uh, what else? The object stores so we're writing to the object store, like the actual, like writing files to that, uh, analytics. We have a separate database for analytics. I think that's it. Um, they've linked some things down here. I should read on the reverse proxy, DNS, uh, the master slave failover, SQL versus no SQL. Um, cool. I think the memory cache inside of the database. So popular content should be cached in the memory cache. Uh, that helps for like traffic spikes. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Not much else. Cool. So yeah, uh, I'll link it. Like I said, this will be in the description. I just kind of want to walk through that, uh, talk through my thoughts to get some practice in uh, for this week. So if you watch this, cool. Um, let me know if I should do more of these.